Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Dominic, Dominic Foley. I'm from the UK, England to be precise. Came to Qatar in uh, 2009 and I've been here ever since. That's about three and a half years, alhamdulillah. I began life in the, in the UK, born to two very Catholic parents. I was raised Catholic. Very close to my 30th year, I, uh, I guess you could say, and I never describe it, but I went through what I called an episode. It was very, very, very traumatic for me. And I became very, very, I wouldn't say very depressed, um, but uh, desperate, desperate's the word. I became very desperate. And being Catholic Christian, I started going back through the history of, of my religion. As I say, I acknowledged God in my own mind, and I, I don't think I ever, ever really doubted the existence of God. But I was now questioning, but what about it? And so it really boiled down to my issue is with God, and those very black and white questions, what does he want from me? Why did he create me? Why am I here? Where am I going? What happens when you die? Sat with a priest, had some great conversations with the priest. But it wasn't conclusive, wasn't getting the answers. And everything was saying, well, look, God sent men. If you believe in God, God sent men to tell you what he wanted. And he sent scripture books. So I thought, OK, well, let's sit down and talk to one of these men then. There aren't any. They're all dead. Ah, oh, except one. OK, can I talk to him? No. Why? Well, he's in the heaven. He was taken up as well. So... I can't talk to him, and if I was to talk to him, it would be like talking to God, because neither of them was right there, and I thought, but this isn't, this is part of the problem. The other way was the books. Okay, well, from my history, I've got the Bible, and from my exposure, there's the Quran. This is on the, the same prophetic line. I knew there were other religions, and I knew there was other scripture, but I'll start with my beginnings. So I picked up the Bible, and I began from the beginning. And this was very, I guess, enlightening. And I'm questioning, and I'm reading, and I'm reflecting, and I'm considering. And in doing this, I could see this book was a book of law. God is telling these people, telling man, telling his creation to do this, not do that. And it was very strict. Because some of the, the prohibitions in this, without putting too fine a point on it, I'd done. So according to this book, I'm condemned to the hellfire. It contradicts what I'd been brought up with, 20, 30 years of Christian teaching, was, no man, you believe in Jesus and it's all okay. Your sins are forgiven, don't worry about this. But the Muslims I, were, I was talking to, they were telling me to the Quran, there's no change. It's the same today as it was 1400 years ago. So rather than read from the beginning to the end, I read from the end to the beginning. I thought this is another way to approach my solution, if you like, or my answers. And I started reading it. SubhanAllah. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, the first line, the first words in this book. And I'm like, flat out. All praise and thanks belongs to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. That's the God I'm talking about. He deserves these props. You give every bit of thanks to the God of everything. That's the one I want to know. Most gracious, most merciful. My heart's like, yeah, I need some of this mercy because right in this old book, I'm like, damned, you know. It's, it's, it's mercy. Master of the Day of Judgment. Okay, sober up time, you know. It's day of Judgment, I've heard for since I was born. And he owns that day. And he's going to lord over everyone and he's going to decide the right from the wrong. Yeah. You alone. Do we worship and you alone? Do we ask for help? Yeah. Christian, are telling me, worship one God. This is what intellectually I know. And this book is right there. I'm acknowledging that. And you alone, we ask for help. I'm thinking, yeah, because he owns, going back to that first verse, he's the Lord of everything. He owns everything. So ask him. <laughs> Surah 
So the next verses will show us the straight way, the way of those on whom you bestowed your favour, not those who incurred your wrath, nor those who went astray. And subhanAllah, I was thinking, obviously I wasn't thinking subhanAllah then, I didn't know the, these phrases, but show us the straight way. You know, I'm asking God to show me the way that is pleasing to him. And then I'm in the third chapter and I just had this overwhelming feeling that I was being asked to ask. It's like, you want to challenge me. Now you're reading this book and you don't believe who it's from, so challenge me. You want proof? Ask, I'll give it to you. I was shy, but I asked. I asked God for an answer to my particular situation, my, my life. Wallahi, the next three verses gave me that answer. I was like, ooh, okay, you asked, you got immediately. So I went through everything. Is there a God? Prove it. Isn't there a, you know, what do you say to those who say there's no God? What do you say to those who got more than one God? Answer after answer after answer. Okay, I'm a, I'm a Christian. Jesus Christ, peace upon him. What do you got to say? Bang, bang, bang. Crucifixion, bang, bang. Jews, bang, bang. It's like, and there's nothing left. Okay, I accept all that. What happens next? After death. Okay, you're going to be brought back to life and called to account for, and you're going to go to paradise or go to hellfire. There's no other way, whether you know it's coming or whether you don't. Whether you believe it or you don't, it's coming. So wake up. 29th of February, 2004. Between me and Allah, I accepted Islam. But I didn't go public. If people were listening carefully to what I'd say, they knew what, they'd know I was a Muslim, but nobody was paying any attention. So I just read through the rest of the Quran, read around Islam, like what I was listening to and, and things like this, and I started praying. I had some vague idea how Muslims prayed, I had no idea what they said, but I'm praying. I knew how to pray from before, so I started. لك الحمد بالإيمان ولك الحمد بالإسلام. This is my life as a Muslim now. This is how I kind of came to Islam. In and then from there, I was even before I'd actually officially accepted Islam, I was very enthusiastic about sharing this light with other people. I wanted people to know about it because I couldn't believe. Anyway, alhamdulillah, I wasn't challenged with my family coming into Islam. We had discussions. I've always tried to present Islam to them, hope that they can see it in my behavior, the changes I've made to my life, and so on and so forth. And very nicely, my mum said that since he's become Muslim, his relationship with me has improved. So my, my thing with Islam, I'd come into Islam, my life had changed in terms, my, my profession had changed. But alhamdulillah, you know, I've had quite a few, alhamdulillah, and this is from Allah Azza quite a few people have accepted Islam at my hands here. So this is, this is definitely an amma from Allah. Ashadu. An. An. La. La. Ilaha. Ilaha. Il. Il. Allah. Allah. Wa. Wa. Ashadu. Ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadun. Muhammadun. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Allah. Allah. And so the center is, is bringing people in, as you hear of many new Muslims coming in every day or week or month like this. We try and educate them, you know, strengthen the faith like this, teach them how to pray, teach them how to make wudu, you know, straighten out some of the misunderstandings of which there are many among the Muslims. So I went into the writing, we produced some magazines, we produced some books, and we hope that through the distribution, through the reading of this new material, you'll help the Muslims understand their religion. What is the, the how do we perform Hajj, for example, side of things. So there's more presentation, there's more, more of the, the chance for me to speak with the people and connect with the people. And I like this, you know, this engagement, you know, you can meet people on their terms and you, you can explain. And you realize how now the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I'm not comparing myself to him, but 
his behaviour was beyond reproach. Why? Because everyone's looking at you. If you're saying something, you're calling them to something, you better be doing it. We should be now praying at night or we will start to increase more of our time of praying at night, staying up after Fajr, making the remembrance of Allah in the, in the appointed times, that, uh, you know, when you know exactly where to look for the best blessings. But we don't want to get into the habit of falling asleep during the day so we can live at night. This isn't the practice of those who went before us. Allah has blessed us with this opportunity to work in the da'wah. It's a blessing, but with the privilege comes an increased responsibility. It's just such a fine line and there are descriptions like it's like a veil. There's a veil over the people who, who between, for those who don't believe and those who do believe, the dis difference is a veil. And a veil is something very thin, almost immaterial. But it's like you're looking like, this is the difference. And so many conversations I have with people, and alhamdulillah, it affirms my faith. Alhamdulillah. And I'm like, can't you see it? But as well, I realize I can't get angry or frustrated with these people because for 30 years, I couldn't see it. But then maybe nobody presented it to me like I'm trying to present it to them. And I realized, well, alhamdulillah, hidayah is from Allah. So, I'll try and do what I can.